This video is going to be about how to create interiors for craft paper pad and scrapbook paper niches. So first, I'm going to be using Canva. You don't need to have the pro version to do this. You can do this with the free version. So if you don't want to spend money, that's perfectly fine. I totally understand. I'm sure you can use other platforms as well, but Canva is one that I'm more familiar with. So first, we need to figure out what size we want to actually do. So head on over to the set trim size bleed and margins document with KDP. You can just Google it. That's what I do. I Google like bleed interior KDP or something like that. And it normally shows up. I'm sure you can also search it somehow in the help section. And right here, there's a search button or like a search bar. So this is where you're going to figure out what size you want to do or how to actually get the measurements. So I do recommend looking at whatever niche you have. So if you have like a unicorn scrapbook paper niche, then I recommend looking at the ones that are already selling. And I'm not recommending niches or anything like that. I'm just trying to think of random examples. I'm not sure if that is a really good selling niche or not. Um, so you just want to look at the books that are already selling and see what size they are because that can definitely be helpful. Sometimes within your niche, you have a size, like if you're doing like a pocket size planner, then you want to do something that's pocket size. But for scrapbook paper, normally they're bigger because people want to have more paper to work with. So I know most of the time the sizes are either eight and a half by eight and a half inches or eight and a half by 11 inches. Those seem to be the most common, so you can do whatever you feel is best. For this video, we'll do the eight and a half by eight and a half because I don't know, I just like the ones that are more square. So Right here, there's eight and a half by eight and a half. And I'm going to keep scrolling down because I want to get to the bleed. So bleed means pretty much if you want everything to print outside the margin or not. And it shows a great example here. You can see no bleed on the left and then bleed on the right. So see on the left how everything is within the margins. There's nothing outside of it. And then on the right, the picture is printed outside of the margin. So I always recommend bleed with scrapbook paper because... I want the entire page to be filled with designs. Like, I don't want there to be any sort of blank space or margin that stops all the designs. So, I always do bleed. So, with bleed, you have to add 0.125 inches. Here, I'll just read this. Uh, when a book is printed, all pages are trimmed to the selected trim size by cutting 0.125 inches from the top, bottom, outside edges. And those objects must extend past where the page will be trimmed by the 0.125 inches. So I know that might be a little bit confusing, which is why I love that KDP literally lays it out for you. So they have your interior page size without bleed and then your page size with bleed. So you don't even have to do the math or figure it out. All you have to do is find your measurement. So down here is eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And then I want bleed. So page size with bleed, I'm going to be grading 8.625 inches by 8.75 inches. So I'm going to go to Canva and I'm going to hit create a design. And then on the bottom here, custom size. And this is what you're going to want to do in order to get your interior with bleed. So we're going to do 8.625. Six two five. I already forgot what it was by eight point seven five. Eight point seven five. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit create new design. So this is going to load in a new page, and it's just going to be completely blank, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So you should already kind of know what you want to create by this point. You should have already done the niche research, and I do have a video on that if you want to check that out. But I would title it whatever you're creating. So if we're doing a unicorn scrapbook paper, I'll just use that as an example. I'll put unicorn scrapbook paper. You could put the size, the interior. You can name it whatever you would like to. So then I'd head on over to Elements, and I would search in Elements. Um, something that I like to start with would be whatever niche I have and then the background. And this will usually bring up some pretty good templates to work with. So let's just use this one for example. It already has a bunch of elements in it that I can use and I'll make it go to the entire page. Sometimes I'll duplicate it, things like that. 
So with Canva, you can't just have one element on a page. Like you need to do something to make it different or make it unique. So for something like this, let me see if I added this, if I could see it in the background. I can. So I could take this and I'm going to hit control and then click. So that way I click this one here. I'm going to do set image as background. So now I have that as a background. So now there's two elements on here. It makes it different. I could just post it like this. Obviously, you want to be different and unique and um, kind of make things your own. So maybe I want to add something else on here. Let's see. What if I add, um, like, we'll just look at ice cream cone. I don't know. Just something random and fun. So let's have this ice cream cone here. I'm going to make it smaller and I could just add this ice cream cone wherever I want it to. I'm not sure this actually really fits in with the theme of this page. So maybe we won't do that. Maybe we'll try this one. It's a little bit better. It kind of flows a little bit more. So then I could change the color of this. I could just move it around. So this would be fine to post because I have more than one element in here and I've been editing it. But again, like you might just want to spice it up a little bit more for yourself. And another way to do it is you can create them yourself. Like you don't have to use a background template or anything like that. You could just create it on your own. So let me take this stars background because I think that's really cute. I'm going to put it up there. I'm going to change the background color to, let's see, maybe a paint. No, let's not do that. Um, let me go to document colors. I want it to be kind of like that color. And I don't know where my stars went. I might have replaced it when I changed the background. Do something like that. And then I could have um, some rainbows and unicorns. I can make this smaller. So I'm going to put this like up here. Could handle it if I wanted to, duplicate it, move it around. I mean, you can do like whatever you want to, honestly. Like, this is your own masterpiece. So I could do that and I could make this unicorn smaller and then move it around. So you can kind of just play with it, see how you like the setup and where you want to have the unicorns. So you can do that as well, just going through all the different elements. I mean, there's so many here. Canva has so many. Like, this unicorn here is so cute. You could definitely do something with that. Um, a way to get kind of repeating images. So, let's say you want this one and you just want it to repeat throughout the page. Then you would just copy and paste, put it where you want it, like how far away. And then Canva will automatically put it the same spacing apart. But if you're having trouble with that you can also do this so let me just add another unicorn here so obviously these aren't spaced correctly or the same space in between and that's what I want so put the two on the edges that you want so I want one here and one here and they're on the outer edge so put them where you want them to be highlight them all go to position and then go to tidy up this is going to space them all perfectly evenly next to each other so now in this case, I would group them together. So hit control G and then I'd copy and paste it down. If you want to kind of alternate it, so have them like in the middle here, then that's going to be a little bit different. Um, so what I would do is I would ungroup them. I would just move them over a bit, copy and paste one, put it next to them so it's all the same now I would group it together and then I would move it over so now you kind of have an extra one to give you that room in order to alternate there we go and again if you want them to be exactly the same you could just do something like that so that's how you would get alternating patterns or the same patterns that just repeat throughout the page and that's something else that you could do. I would maybe spice it up a little bit more. Like instead of just having the unicorn, maybe I could do like a sparkles background. 
Let's see what comes up for that. Maybe this one. This one's kind of cute. Can't see it too much, but it does add a little bit of flair around it. So there's things like that. I could hit see all. Maybe do like a glitter background. Maybe we'll see what that has. Oh, this is like way too much. Um, Just do this one. Oh, that's better. It's just, it just has more and it's smaller. If you want to change the background, you could. You could take this whole background, replace the background. I don't really like how that looks, but you could do something like that. So there's definitely a wide range of possibilities to do. And for how many pages to do is totally up to you. You could do five designs. You could do 10 designs. Um, you could do 20 designs. I don't recommend doing more than 10 per scrapbook paper because I plan to do a video on the cover and I do already have some on that already. I normally put some of the images on the cover so that way you can actually like get a preview of it. I'm just going to add some more pages here so that way I have them for whenever I show you guys how to do the cover. I'll just make it easier. Um, but you can definitely do whatever you feel is best. I just don't recommend doing more than 10 per book and that's just how I feel. And I normally do around 5 to 10 pages per design, I think. I don't know. I'd have to do the math here. So normally if we're doing like a like a 20 page scrapbook paper and you have five designs and it'd only be four pages each. So it kind of is up to you what you want to do. I always double side mine and I try to do enough pages where I feel like it's worth it because you have to remember that this is going to be printed in premium color most likely and that means that it's going to cost more money to print. So you don't want to have too many pages where people have to pay $20 for this because i guessing they probably won't, but you don't want to have too little pages where they pay for it and they don't really get any pages to use. So I would look at your competitors again, see how many pages they're doing and what your designs are and go from there. If you do have a black and white strap of paper, then you probably can do more pages and get away with it because it won't cost so much to print. So this is how you would do the interior for your strap of paper. Or craft paper pad. Notice how I have all the images going to the edges. I don't have margins or anything because this is going to be bleed. So I want everything to be printed. And this is the resource that I used and I will make sure to link it in the description below so that way you can have that yourself if you need to. And I do also have a free 30-day trial with Canva since I'm an affiliate with it. So if you join after the trial, I get a commission at no cost to you. So I would really appreciate it if you would use my link for trying Canva out. But again, you don't need the pro version to do this. You can do it with the free version. So thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope that you have a great day.